Hello, it's Scott Manley here. It's Christmas Day, and this is my doggy, Lucky, who you may have met. He was a stray we rescued from the streets of Oakland many, many years ago, and he's been living with us. But I want to talk about a Christmas miracle involving space dogs. So yeah, that's why he's here. So as you probably know, there have been a lot of space dogs through the years. And the Soviet Union used them as test subjects for a lot of their rocket experiments to make sure you're to understand the stresses on humans before they risk humans. And I'm going to say it's unfortunate not all of them survived, but they started testing their uh, space dog with test space dogs in uh, 1951. They flew a pair of dogs called Dizik and Saigon on an R1 rocket. The R1 was basically a clone of the V2 rocket and they were it was able to carry the crew to an altitude of 110 kilometers and then they parachuted back to Earth and were recovered and the ground crews were super excited and rushed over to cuddle the brave test pups and after their safe rule landing you're breaking all the rules obviously. But, uh, you know, they continued to experiment with dogs for a very long time. They upgraded, you know, they went and tested them on bigger rockets. And then, of course, in uh, 1957, we had uh, Laika, who flew on Sputnik 2. And sadly, of course, was the one case of a subject which was sent on a mission knowing that there would be no way to recover her. Uh, all of the dogs, incidentally, were females because they were better behaved and able to handle the stresses of spaceflight a lot better than their male counterparts. So yeah, Laika is a sort of tragic moment in this whole thing. She wasn't the first dog in space, but was the first one to stay in orbit and was the first one sent there knowing that she wouldn't come back alive. So... Belka and Strelka, they flew in 1960s, and 1960 was when they were developing the Vostok capsule in anticipation of flying their first cosmonaut. So the Vostok was much larger, it had a large pressurized cabin, it had control systems and the ability to safely deorbit and return to the surface of the Earth under parachute. Now, they uh, were able to fly Belka and Strelka, and they flew around the Earth for, you know, a uh, I don't know how long, but they came back safely and became, of course, international stars. You know, they were the first large, cute animals to fly to space and come back alive. And famously, one of them had puppies, and one of the puppies was given to the U.S. president, who was John F. Kennedy, and I think his daughter Caroline got them. So space dogs traveled all around the world in more way than one. But that wasn't the end of the experiments with Vostok. You know, they were still developing this spacecraft, and it was experimental. At the start of December 1960, they had uh, a test where they launched a pair of dogs and went into orbit for a number of orbits. And when they were coming back, there was a problem with the vehicle orientation system, and the deorbit burn didn't slow them down quickly enough to come back to their planned landing site. So they stayed in orbit a little bit longer, and then apparently an onboard self-destruct kicked in, destroying the spacecraft before it re-entered over China. So Vostok obviously was a highly sensitive piece of space hardware, and Russia wasn't interested in allowing it to fall into the hands of any other possible nation. Furthermore, Vostok was the same as Zenit. So Zenit was the prototype spy satellite. It would basically be Vostok-style capsule with the cameras inside uh, pointing out of the windows, able to take photographs of the Earth, and then they would be able to recover the whole capsule with the film and get their data. So one of the reasons why these two things were exactly the same was because it made it easier for Karelyev to get the politicians on board so that he could build his crewed spacecraft. So, yeah, this spacecraft unfortunately failed. Uh, over, and that was, well, that was rather tragic for the crew on board. So December 22, 1960, 60 years ago today, pretty much, they launched another pair of dogs on board a new version of the R7 rocket designed for Vostok. So previously they'd launched the Vostok capsule on the Luna version of the R7, which had added a third stage. The new version, they upgraded that engine on that second stage. They previously had an RD0105. 
Now it became an RD0109, which had about 10% more thrust and supposedly more reliability. The launch went according to plan initially. The first two stages of the R7 went off. Corolli of Cross, beautiful. Third stage lit and worked for about two minutes before something happened and the engine failed. And at this point, the vehicle wasn't anywhere near orbital velocity. And so it had reached an altitude of about 200 kilometers and began falling back for a brutal re-entry, high Gs being uh, forced upon the, uh, you know, the, the, the inhabitants of the capsule. Telemetry was tracked. They did see a parachute deploy. They saw a landing and then they, they sort of lost track of the signals. So it's known where roughly where the capsule is. It's known that there is a bomb on board, but also it's known that the weather is pretty inhospitable in that part of the world. It's Siberia and it's in winter. It's very likely that if they don't get to these dogs very soon, they will be frozen to death because not only are, would they be in cold weather, but actually they were also testing the ejection system because the Vostok capsules, the crew didn't land inside them. The crew would be ejected out of the side and then they would parachute to Earth. So the dogs were in this little pressurized cabin which would shoot out the side on a rocket motor. And it didn't have all the life support, all the heating that the main Vostok capsule did. So they wouldn't last very long if the weather was terribly inclement. So Korolev picks an engineer and says, go up to Siberia and recover this quickly. The guy is named Fedor Vostokov, which is an interesting coincidence. He jumps on a plane with uh, an explosives engineer to defuse the device. And they get there the next day. They go looking. They don't find it. Day after, they find it at 10 a.m. And in their aircraft, they can't land. So they go back to base, log the report, jump in a helicopter, and head back out. And when they land they find that it is in you know, five, six feet, you know, shoulder depth snow, and they have to push their way through that. They're, they're only like 30 meters from the capsule, but it took them a long time to actually get to the capsule through this really deep snow. And when they get there, they find that the crew didn't eject, that the ejection system initially fired, but it didn't pull the capsule, the crew cabin with it. Instead, the dogs are still in their little pressurized cabin inside the Vostok and the top of the capsule is, is lost or the top of the ejection system is lost. So they work hard, pull this pressurized cabin out and then the explosive expert goes in and the upside down manages to defuse the explosive system. Now eventually the uh, one of the dog handlers gets there, opens up the capsule and he finds that they are still alive. It's a Christmas miracle! Because think about it, like if they had ejected as was supposed to happen, they would have frozen to death. And the explosives, they were actually past the time at which the explosives were supposed to have triggered. So that system failed as well. If both those things had worked, or if either of those things had worked, those dogs would not have been alive. That was, this was Comet and Shutka were their names. Comet was obviously Comet, Shutka meant joke. And they survived, and it was Christmas. And I know some of you will say, well, it's not really Christmas because it was Russia and they were celebrating on a different day and whatever. Yeah, like, listen, Comrade Scroogey, as far as I'm concerned, it's a Christmas miracle. So, yeah, those two went on to, you know, they lived. One of them, Comet, was actually adopted by a guy called Oleg Gadzenko. And he is actually a really important figure in space medicine. He's one of the founders of it. You know that photograph of Belka and Strelka being held up? He's the guy doing it because he was pretty much, you know, one of the big in charge of that program. So Comet lived for 14 years as a pet of Oleg and had puppies and, you know, continued to have a happy life. So that is a wonderful, happy ending for this story, which was saved by, you know, complete luck. So with that Christmas miracle, I'll leave you to get on with the rest of your day. Have a great one. Happy Christmas. Happy whatever. Happy Festivus for the rest of us. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.